Greetings, in this short video we are going to learn how to draw a network diagram based on the precedence relationships. So we will start with a very simple example of construction of a pyramid. Very often children going in a kindergarten are asked to uh, develop some simple exercises like this as it helps in building their logic and understanding the relationships. So if we see how this pyramid is constructed, uh, you would notice that you cannot place block two in its position unless and until block four and block five are already in place. Likewise, for block three, it cannot be put in its place unless block five and block six are in their place. And if we move on, block one cannot be uh, put in its place unless block two and block three are in its position. So let's draw in a, a standard network diagram that could be understand, understood by project management professionals. So whenever we uh, start a new project, the norm is that we have a milestone activity, which uh, signifies start of a project. So here we start. And here you can see four, five, six has got no predecessor. So these are the activities that could happen right away. So I'm placing four, five, and six soon after the start activity. Now activity two can only take place once activity four and five have been completed. So the start of activity two is dependent on completion of activity two and act activity four and five. And this type of a relationship is also referred to as a finish to start relationship, which means that activity four must finish and likewise activity five must finish before we could commence work on activity two. And likewise, if you look at the block three, it can only be put it in its place only once block five and block six have been completed. And the last activity here is the laying of block one, which is the last activity. So this is a very simple example of how we transfer a logic relationship indicating where pre various predecessor relationships into a logic diagram. So let's review the concepts learned previously by looking at another example. So here you could see a table with a list of activities in the left column and the predecessor relationship indicated in the right column. So uh, if you're watching it, maybe you could pause it and uh, draw a network diagram. Um, I will just give you an illustration. So as we discussed, the first activity in any project is often the milestone uh, activity, which indicates start of the project. Now here, once the project is started, the first activity, which has got no predecessor is activity A. So right happening at the beginning of the project. Now activity B depends on a predecessor, which is activity A. So B will only take place once A is finished. Likewise, C is dependent upon completion of A. So C would take place once A is completed. Now if you look, D has a predecessor B, which uh, would indicate through this finish to start arrow, that we must finish B before we could start work on D. And E here in this instance has got two predecessors, as you could see, uh, depending on B and C. So E uh, would depend not only on B, but also on C. And the last, uh, uh, sorry, the second last is activity F, which depends on completion of activity D and activity G, which is the last activity and dependent upon completion of activity E and F. So this completes the network diagram. And if you want, you could have a milestone activity towards the end indicating end of this project. So this is how your final solution may look like.
All right, so as we have learned how to draw a network diagram, now let's review some of the uh, uh, basic theory. Firstly, most modern project scheduling software tools would help you generate network diagrams. So if you are using a tool like Microsoft Project or Primavera or uh, Astra Project, uh, all you have to do is specify the tasks and their durations and the logical sequence and the software would automatically generate a network uh, diagram. Now, as projects uh, became larger and more complex, the Gantt chart was found to be lacking as a planning and control tool. Although link mark chart does show logical relationship, it soon became uh, cluttered as the number of activities and logical relationship increased. So a typical project could have up to 500, 600 um, activities. So uh, using a bar chart to uh, indicate the relationship it, uh, it becomes very difficult to read and comprehensive. So usually what we do is at a higher level, we t prefer having a network diagram to have a bird's eye view of the project and its key work packages. And for detailed micro level planning, we would prefer to use uh, a tool such as uh, the bar chart. Feedback from the industry and commerce in the 1950s indicated that there is a need to develop scheduling methods which integrated project procurement resources and cost. And this saw emergence of a use of critical path uh, scheduling. And uh, it was developed in the form of program evaluation and review techniques and critical path method. The format of the network diagrams presented activities in boxes and the sequence of the activities from left to right to show the logic of the project. So well done. Uh, you have now basic understanding of how to draw a network diagram.